When it comes to Matt Corral, you see a player that is the epitome of a college quarterback. He's not very tall, standing at 6'2", he's pretty athletic, but he doesn't have elite speed or anything like that, and Corral has a lean build only weighing around 210 pounds. During his time at Ole Miss, he was pretty consistent throwing for 3,300 yards over the past two seasons. Ole Miss featured a ton of screens, run pass options, and design plays that allowed him to get the ball out early. Corral has a strong arm to make all these throws. He also has a very quick release, which allows him to get the ball quickly to his target while throwing a tight spiral. Honestly, from a college perspective, Corral is the type of quarterback that many teams would kill for. The question is whether or not he'll develop into something more than that at the next level. Before I answer that, if you can do me a huge favor and like and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyways, I mentioned this before, but Ole Miss ran a ton of screens and run pass options. These made up a large portion of their offense. Whether that be all slants or all hitches, Corral will get the ball quickly to his target. He generally threw with good accuracy on short and medium throws. Anywhere within 10 to 15 yards of the line of scrimmage, I never had to worry about his accuracy. He rarely sailed passes at that depth, and I didn't see many obvious mistakes, especially when he set his feet and delivered the ball quickly. His release was tight, and the ball was placed at the right spot with a good bit of speed. Those throws were never the problem. The problem was entirely his deep ball accuracy. Basically, any time Corral threw a lob or a touch pass down the field, I was consistently unimpressed with his placement. He couldn't figure out where to put the ball, and he left so many yards and points on the field. He would leave it short and force his receivers to slow down, he would put it too far inside where his safety would be there to break it up, and his passes down the sideline often would fly out of bounds. This was exacerbated even more anytime he was under pressure or he was moved off his spot. This was extremely frustrating to watch because the touchdowns he did gain on deep throws were often on coverage busts or double moves by a wide receiver that would leave them wide open. On these throws, accuracy was less important and consequently it didn't really matter nearly as much if the ball wasn't placed exactly where it needed. However, on throws when accuracy was necessary for a long completion, the ball placement for his touch throws was always a bit off. Again, it's not about arm strength because he has plenty of that, it's just his placement is the main issue here. Outside of accuracy, the other thing I noticed was that Corral does a good job of running the ball both as a passer and as a runner. As a runner, he would juke and spin his way to extra yards. Corral is kind of scrappy. Actually, scratch that, Corral is very scrappy. Like, I love the effort on some of these runs, even though I do think he'll need to slide more and protect himself in the NFL. I do worry about his longevity simply due to his build. He's a bit slender, so I think he especially needs to slide earlier to protect his body. Now, as a passer, Corral does an excellent job of using his athleticism to escape the pocket and pick up extra yards. He's less of an improvisational quarterback than your Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett, but he has the legs to damage defense on the ground. He'll quickly go through the play design, and then he'll make his move and run forward. What impressed me about him is his sense for knowing when to make that move. He has a very good sense for pressure. It's one of his best traits. I still think he needs to learn how to shift in the pocket with good footwork, but he at least does a great job in knowing exactly where the pressure is coming from. I want to show you a play from his game against Alabama that highlights this ability. Ole Miss was in a shotgun bunch of linemen to the right with a solo receiver on the outside. The left receiver is running a post, while the receivers from the right are running a three-level flood concept across the field. This is a great play design because it utilizes the wide open space to the left for the receivers to stretch the defense. The way you read this play is from high to low. You start at the fade and then work your way all the way down to the check down. From the defense's perspective, Alabama has two safeties on the field. After Ole Miss motions the wide receiver on the right in the backfield, the deep left safety steps forward. He actually gives his attentions away by doing this and basically shows the offense that Alabama is playing cover three buzz on this one. He's responsible for buzzing into the hook roll zone underneath. After the snap, the left guard is immediately blown backwards. He's getting beat outside. Corral senses this and then he steps up to avoid the tackle. While this was happening, the nose tackle was able to penetrate through the A-gap between the center and the right guard. His feet get entangled so he hits the ground right in front of the quarterback. Corral somehow senses this too, he avoids the tackle, and he's able to step backwards while keeping his eyes down the field. He sees his second re-get open across the field and he places a catchable pass to him. While yes, the pass was low, you can't reasonably expect a perfect throw from the platform that Corral had. He was able to avoid two almost sacks, keep his eyes down the field, and he was still able to make a play on this one. This was an amazing play, and it was one of the best I saw from while going through his film. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Ole Miss's entire scheme is pretty much based on RPO screens and design plays. With that in mind, there were very few examples of Corral progressing through more than his initial reads. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him make it to the backside of a play. This is either by choice where he scrambles forward, or just because Ole Miss's system never incorporates that into the play design. This is a problem because it shows how much of a project that Corral really is. Take this play against Auburn. Ole Miss is in shotgun and Corral checks the left side of the play before working across the middle. Since the wide receiver is covered with the dropping linebacker, a safety over the top, and the quarterback trailing behind in man, Corral should move on and check the back side of the play. 
If he did this, he would have seen the backside dig open for a throw by the right hash. All Kral had to do is progress to this read, and it's a 15-yard play. Instead of that, he just scrambles forward and picks up a few yards on the ground. Plays like this were very common for Kral. He would choose to scramble after his initial reads were covered. I don't think it's as bad as he's a one-read run quarterback, but it's definitely close. The thing about Corral is that while his arm is solid, his accuracy on short and medium throws is pretty good too, and that while he has a good sense for pressure, what bothers me about him as a prospect is simply the lack of upside. I came away wanting more. Better downfield accuracy, a more nuanced understanding of progressions, which he isn't there yet, or really any top tier. I just didn't get that from his film. The issue with all this is that while Corral can learn to improve his skill set and master progressions, he's still very much a project. Taking him early would be a massive risk. That's not to say that any of the other quarterbacks aren't risky or anything like that. It's just low floor, medium ceiling quarterbacks rarely work out in the NFL. There are definitely things to like about Corral. I mentioned his quick release and his scrappiness as a runner, but he has a ton of work to do to become a top player. Corral ran the most college of college offenses, and I feel like his transition to an NFL team is going to be very hard. For this reason, the earliest I'm willing to take Corral is in the third round. Well, that's all I have for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Next up is Sam Howell. Make sure you keep it out for that one. Like usual, if you liked my work and you want to support this channel directly, feel free to click the link to my Patreon below. You can also follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.